what is the strategy of euro asianism euro asianism okay what are your views on alexander dugin's multipolarity where he proposes north south coordination north america south america europe africa russia india japan south east asia under against unipolar american structure do you think this is just another feel good idea like communism or india could present much more practicality in the system eurasianism is the idea of a russian okay so according to this idea of eurasianism it's about russia it says its core principle or ten- tenet is that russia is not a western uh country it's about um, it's about russia becoming an empire so russia is neither east nor west that's what eurasianism says that is the core principle or tenet of eurasianism that russia is neither a western entity or an eastern entity it's somewhere in between it is definitely not western it's eurasian and it also says that russia should uh, become a eurasian empire uh which is located obviously in in northern eurasia the northern half of eurasia and it would also say that uh, russia would need access to warm water ports maybe in the mediterranean maybe in the indian ocean region wherever it can maybe that would that would uh, uh for that they would need to conquer perhaps iran or something like that you know that's the kind of thing it is now when it comes to alexander dugin's uh, multipolarity a uh, north south cooperation north america south Co- america makes no sense because north america is the us and south america is totally under us hegemony makes no sense there europe africa has a master slave relationship europe is the colonizer africa is still colonized so it, it again makes no sense of them cooperating when they have this very very uh, colonial relationship Russia India makes a lot of sense Japan South East Asia Japan and South East Asia don't have very good history and Japan is right now a US vassal state so it makes no sense so the only cooperation that makes sense in all of these examples you've given is Russia India because India and Russia have no uh, shared border they have no adversarial adversarial relationship they have no grounds for having any enmity and there are lots and lots of areas in which russia and india can cooperate and work together so russia and india are actually natural allies so yeah when it comes to russia india cooperation it makes sense it makes sense and multipolarity also makes sense so uh, so in this uh, world view russia would not be a global hegemon but it, it would be a major empire uh, in in eurasia stretching apparently from dublin to vladivostok dublin ireland to vladivostok in the far east of russia and there would be cooperation with uh, major powers possibly like india possibly like china china obviously is a long term threat to russia so that cooperation would be issue based and conditional and uh, in the time uh, uh not long term cooperation so that's how it is so that is the great russian dream one could say and alexander dugin is is a geo strategist he's a philosopher of some kind apparently they call him a philo- philosopher and he's a russian nationalist he is a traditionalist a conservative uh and he he is somebody who believes in the recreation of of a russian of a great russian empire so that's that's the that's the deal with alexander dugin do you think this is just another feel good idea like communism it's not an ideology like communism it's it's a stated end goal for russia uh so yeah it could be something that the russians may be working towards let's is it practical right now it is it is still in the realm of dreams and fantasy but who knows everything starts with dreams and fantasies it can be achieved practically things like that can happen especially with technology in the 21st century so it is a distant possibility a distant dream but it is not impractical it's not a feel good idea it is something the russians possibly mr putin also would want to achieve so that's what eurasianism is